As we enter this holy space and time, go ahead and take a silence your cell phones and don't try to turn on our lives. It is love and for the Lord of God. Welcome. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen a marginal way. Instead, we can put others to work ourselves. We will all take the best seat at the table. We will continue to be able to Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Our mission here at St. John's. We go back to God and experience us in the
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of love and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And all of The first lesson is found in Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. 
Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 15 responsibly by whole verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill? Lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading comes from Colossians chapter 1. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly blood through death, body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints, to them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may, be present, we, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Word of God, word of life. Amen. went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work for myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, why are you worried and distracted by many things? There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So I, I avoided preparing for the sermon like a plague because I was having my own little Mary and Martha experience. But we'll get to that in a minute. Just a little bit. Um, and for those of you that weren't here last week, I usually do a just a Here's what all those readings meant and, and what, what is tying them together, um, campus minister style. So um, the first one was Genesis 18. Um, I loved 
Genesis so much. I could do a whole sermon on this, but it probably would probably be more like a Sunday school thing. But um, anyway, um, so something to note um, in the Old Testament, every word means something. So um, when the Lord appeared to Abraham, um, don't forget for those of you that, or for those of you that don't know, Abraham, he didn't know anything about God or specifically monotheism or anything. But just one day, he just heard God and started believing in him. And don't we all wish that we could just do it on a dime like that? So anyway, God appears in the Oaks of Mamre um, in Latin and in a few other languages. Mamre, Mamre, Mamre didn't check the pronunciation on that one, um, is meaning vision. So he has a vision under the degree of vision. Interesting. Um, but he sees three men, um, and this is foreshadowing of things to come, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three men. Recognizes that the Lord is one of the men personified. So is it Jesus? Is it not? Do we know? Um, there's some more foreshadowing and some other, other readings um, through this. Um, and he didn't just go in the kitchen and tell Sarah to get cooking. He ran into the tent. Um, no delay, just immediately get, get with it. He saw the Lord and made haste. Um, and specifically, um, enough for three, enough for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's bread, bread of life, Jesus. So there's a little bit of that going on. Um, and then uh, taking the calf, he didn't take old Bessie, he took the tender and really good one. So they had Kobe bees, they didn't have, you know. Um, Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this just wasn't any, and you know, um, the sheep um, from Abraham wasn't uh, when, when he sacrificed um, the sheep instead of the son. <coughs> a young sheep, Jesus, Lamb of God. So you're kind of seeing some foreshadowing in there. Um, didn't say anything about the courage of the milk. Don't know what to tell you there. Um, and then. Um, the funnier part of this is, you know, the where's your wife Sarah? If she's in the tent, we'll tell her she's going to have a baby. And Sarah laughs. And Jesus, or God, or one of the three men, is like, I heard you laughing. <laughs> she's like, I wasn't laughing because you were. And so it's an interesting exchange, but that's for another, another time. So we have some foreshadowing. We see that, you know, depending on where your beliefs are, Jesus maybe was right there still. Um, with us from the very beginning. Um, and then moving on to Psalm 15. Um, man, that's a lot of things to live up to, isn't it? Um, it is one of my favorite Psalms, but whoo, um, those who lead a blameless life and do what's right, those who speak the truth, um, I am not blameless, and I'll share that with you in a moment. Um, and you know, they shall never be overthrown. And fortunately, um, Paul tells us in Colossians, that no matter what we are, through Christ, we are blameless. And we are all fixed up and made pretty, and we are that person um, that they speak of in um, Psalms. And then something else in, in Corinthians, I, I know I don't have the Bible memorized, it just happens to be another favorite verse. Um, they say, therefore, I will boast all more gladly of my weaknesses, um, of my, my shortcomings, my um, love for the Tennessee Volunteers by whatever, because in Christ I will be made strong. And um, it's kind of just brought all together that just by being me and, and believing in Christ, having faith in Christ, I am just as good as this blameless person. That is in Psalm 15, which, whew, um, thank goodness, um, because last weekend we had a very Martha moment. Um, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law were um, coming into town um, from Augusta, and um, once I got into a fight, <laughs> we may still be a little bit, but um, you know, I was doing the, can you help me, this is your brother coming up, can, can you please just like do one thing around the house, can you, you know, and I was just being full Mary, like, can you just help me do one thing, you know, I'm doing all this stuff, and you're not listening to, you know, I mean, this is why I avoided it, because this was God working on my heart a little bit um and you know we got into it and um just a little background on the two of us um i'm in a doctoral program for leadership i have a master's in counseling so i should be able to communicate very well um he also <laughs> has lots of experience 
you know, working with conflict resolution and all this kind of stuff. So there's really no excuse for us to even really be arguing, but we are. We're acting like our seven-year-old, except she's probably being the more mature one in this whole situation. But it is what it is. Um, and what um, is interesting, and, and my, my sister-in-law, at least, is a saint. Um, she is not Jesus, but she is a saint. So, I mean, there are some similarities here. Um, but... Um, the interesting thing about this particular passage is that Martha sat at the feet of Jesus. No, Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Um, and the posture she took at the feet is that of a rabbi, that of um, a disciple. Um, and in some translations, it was she was hanging on every word he was saying. It wasn't that she was just hanging out with him. I mean, she was just eating up everything that he was saying. And um, Martha was, you know, probably rightfully upset. I mean, for real, I was just there last weekend. I totally get where she's coming from. Um, but there is a time for works, and there is a time for faith. And um, some of the um, commentaries mentioned that, you know, maybe this is pitting works and faith, faith against one another. Um, the one I kind of preferred was trying to explain that there's a balance. And um, this is interesting because it comes, this particular story comes right after the Good Samaritan hence last week. And that was a lot of doing. Um, the Good Samaritan did a lot of doing for that person um, who was pretty much left for dead. And so this week we're seeing a lot of sitting, listening, and being, and pondering in your heart. And I think that is a good balance of just don't try to do one more one and the other. Maybe don't make your sister mad too, but do balance. And I think that's something that we, just as general human beings and um, especially Southern women, we get caught up in the doing and the Southern hospitality and making sure everything's right for when people come over. And we do get caught up in that. Can you just help me? Just, just can you just take out the trash. And, and we do. And it's normal. And it's human. And that's okay. And it's okay because Jesus is there with us. He knows what's going on. He hears everything that we're, we're dealing with. And he still, through his power, makes us blameless. And that is a beautiful thing. Um, something that uh, one commentary said with the whole Martha and Martha, that was very much a, a parent being tender. He wasn't chastising her. He was basically saying, oh, honey, don't worry about that. She actually chose the right one. And, when, and in some translations, the right one is the right meal, um, and it's pertaining all pertaining to food. So the food that she has might be more important than the food that you're making. And... Um, it was mentioned that maybe Jesus invited her to join Mary at Jesus' feet so she too could learn and so she too was reconciled. And that, that fits so well um, with me that, you know, even in our midst of frustration and trying to do all the things right and trying to be blameless. Jesus just wants us to listen, to hear, and to see what his good is doing in the world and what he has to say to us. And so, having said all that, um, I do want to ask, where is your balance right now? How are you doing? Obviously, I'm a little off kilter still. I'm really trying to work on that. And, you know, sometimes my working on that is taking my coffee outside, just listening to the birds, and listening to creation, and listening to what God has just put right in my backyard. And that just helps just a little bit. And so I do want to challenge you. If you find yourself ever so slightly out of kilter, um, I'm going to guess that we're probably all not hanging on every single word of Jesus Christ right now. We're probably on the other side of that. Do take some time. Do take some time and listen to what God has to say to you, even if it's just crickets, even if it's a baby crying, even if it's laughter, even if it's just a song, 
even if it's a song in here, just listen. And um, just think of this balance. Um, kind of a thought that occurred to me is like, you know, when we were in elementary school, we were working with the little gram waves, and we, we put the little gram wave, and then we put a little bit more, and put a little bit more. And that, just, that visualization made me realize that every little bit counts in counteracting that out of whack, out of balance. It doesn't matter how many little things you do, they will add up to one big thing. They will add up to you eventually being able to listen and hang on every word of Jesus. So just be patient with yourself and listen and listen with great anticipation.
your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. Bless this ministry of our church congregation, Augustinian, Lutheran School, Guatemala, St. Stephen, Barbaria, Grace Mission, and Shamwa Orphanage, Haiti. God of grace, hear our prayers. Through Christ, you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God is grace. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and protect to, to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. Protect those serving in the military, especially Chance Sequoia. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ we bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, and your spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers, especially Kathleen, Charlie, William, Bob, Susan and David, Maureen, April, Andy and June, John, Sarah, Catherine, Kay, Janet, Debbie, God of grace. Send blessings to those selling birthdays, celebrating birthdays, Gwen the Flowers Taylor, Rita Johnson, Bonnie Nichols, and those celebrating anniversaries, Joseph and Kathleen Dahl, Harry and Sharon Willard, God of grace. Yeah. In Christ, we make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless this ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace. Yeah. Hear now the unspoken and spoken words and prayers of your people. God of grace, in Christ you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen.
abundance. You have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we will be from your goodness, strengthen us to be better in the field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, on this day, overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened us to the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their unending to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you, and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await the day when all peoples of the earth will come to the river and enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal, as grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so that your church may be gathered from the ends of the earth, and that all people may be fed with the bread of life, your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. The Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray in your language, however we pronounce it. Our Father, who art in heaven,
fed us with your mercy. Send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do we have any announcements? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just a quick update on the sign. Leah has to be in the told you last week, I think. Waiting for the bid to come back. The guy going to do the job, supposed to do it. Has kidney stones, so you don't know if her mom is going to get sick. Everything is on core on board now with the with the playground. Bailey found the playground equipment. Lynn has already got a contractor rubber mulch, so that should be done next few weeks. We hope. Um, we need some help with altar guilds, communion, people counting money. Um, who else? Would, Just need some, you know, ushers, greeters. It don't take long, but we can really use it because we have probably maybe ten people do do you know repetitiously. So we use the help. One more to that thing. There's a white bucket out there. That bucket, since this playground and everything's not coming out of anybody's pocket here, I put a white bucket there so you can leave yourself up some money every Sunday, some more of it. This is going to be for carpet out here in the narthex and maybe in Lynn's office and in, in the other rooms. The carpet being there for 20 years. And if you just put a little change in there by December, it should add up. So this is new carpet in here. That carpet out there is not new. Also, Lynn's office and the other rooms are being painted because Lynn's, Lynn's been working that ugly green office for like 15 years. And, and nobody should be subjected to that. It's ugly. So she wants to do it. We have the money for that. We have the money to paint, have the money for repairs. So um, please try to give in that white bucket. We'll try to get enough. Uh, oh, Tish is going to oversee the, the carpet looking at it and, and the pricing stuff. So she'll need maybe two or three people to assist her in doing that. You know, maybe go clean the carpets, maybe go lunch, whichever, and pick out a right kind of carpet that will fit up. So if you'd like to volunteer to do that, please see Tish and um, fellowship in the hall, uh, in, the, in the fellowship hall after this. And am I missing anything? I think Amy wants to say something. Did you? No? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Hey, God, can you find somebody to open the door for Jen? Yes, sir. Do, do that. Do I have anything Thank else? You. No. Thank you. Gary. Just want to remind everybody that if you're interested in centering prayer, that was for the 16th of August. August. We haven't given up on it. 
Hey, theology on tap is going back when August. So everybody knows about theology on tap. Go have a drink, eat a meal, and argue over books. Much more is fun. Oh yes, don't forget. Uh, Lynn has put in the bulletin on the twenty seventh, which is on Thursday. Is it a Wednesday? Is it the twenty seventh? Is it Wednesday? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I got to make sure he knows that. On Wednesday, the 27th, we will have a potluck dinner and a meet and greet with potential new pastor. His name is Larry. So he'll just be like Larry, like my dog. And um, we'll get to meet him, get to eat, get to ask all the questions we want. And then y'all can say, yay, or that. But it'll be up to you. So he's a nice guy. The council's already met him before on Zoom. He, he knows the church. He, he A lot of things that we're interested in in this congregation, what he does well, which is what we're looking for. So um, keep our fingers crossed that, that he's supposed to be here. Uh, that tentatively he is supposed to be here. If something that happens, if Senate says no, then he can't do anything. So I'm going to quit talking. Worship will follow. I'm sorry. Seven o'clock. Thank you, Gail. So an hour and a half, we will eat, meet him, talk, ask questions, <clears throat> and then when he leaves, he shouldn't have any more questions, right? <laughs> and we will take that vote probably on that Sunday following. Okay. Thank you, Brother. I have a question for people under 30. Um, um, I'm only 20. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a question for people under 30. Um, I am, you know, since y'all are working on getting a new sign, um, I am working on some social media um, for people who aren't, it's really for the people who aren't already here to try to bring them in, um, just as a sign for the people who are already here to try to bring them in. And so um, I'm coming up with a couple of different things. Um, I, I have almost come up with a, a whole Saturday Night Live character that I'm going to put on TikTok. But, um, I'm really interested um, in hearing what might entice you or your friends um, to come here and what messages other than our mission, because that's important um, to make sure that people know what that is, and what that means, what that means in daily life. But what would attract you here that I could put on social media that would actually bring me? And I am not below completely humiliating myself or making a fool of myself to bring your friends here. I'm totally down with that. I, I'm about to post one already. So um, just something to keep in mind if you have kids or you, know, you have friends or nieces or nephews or something, just, you know, here's a reason to call them up today. Just ask them what, what would be interesting because I've been kind of looking around at other pastors and other ministers and there, there's a bit of a trend of my church is better than yours because, and I'm really not interested in doing that. Um, I'm not really interested in bashing other churches as much as I'd rather say, you know, come on in, the water's great. So uh, just something to think about. Any other announcements? Awesome. Okay. Well, here's one. Um, God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone. The ever-living spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. And I promise I'm going to get better at telling you to stand up. <laughs> I am doing good to not drop this. I've already dropped this twice today. So just maybe one more round and I'll be okay next week. <laughs> Amen. 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 Amen.